Then we have Alzheimer's, which is considered the new diabetes, because it's twice as much. Then we have electromagnetic diabetes. We have people, I see a variety of people, what, between the cell phones and, and, and smart meters and all this, is their blood sugars go up. And the only way they can drop their blood sugars is go out, away from all of this, you know, a few miles away. So that's a very real thing that we're looking at. Then we have chemically caused diabetes, Agent Orange, different pesticides, herbicides, okay? And then we have radiation diabetes, which you have not heard of, correct? Because I just made it up. <laughs> but there's a reason I made it up, because it's true, okay? And so we're just going to take a look at that. And this is, we have Fukushima, but it's a bigger picture. This is the amount of uh, nuclear tests that have been done around the world. And believe me, that stuff doesn't go away. And you, you can see a little explosions here and there. And what you're seeing is since 1945, we had a tremendous amount of radiation that we created. Now, in addition to that, just look at that. It's like, whoa, because they're doing the beam in the islands. Okay, just to give you a hint that they had a 200% increase in diabetes after all those nuclear testing. In Chernobyl, type 1 increased 200%. Interesting. And uh, in um, Japan, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, they had a significant increase like a three generations later of those survivors of those areas. So this is like, oh, now you see that's why Russia is a little concerned because they got all this radiation. And this is in their list of uh, all, the, all the bombs that they've done, you know, 1,032 in the United States. Now look at, unfortunately, the Southwest. And you, but it's really all over the place. You can see... Um, and, and, and truly, they did research and they found the IQs were dropping during this stuff and when they finally stopped doing the nuclear testing, IQs began to rise again. Because radiation does affect the brain. So, this is, this is just one piece. And then we have... You fly, okay, and, then, and I, I'm going to explain that. Fukushima is affecting us in the water, coming this way, and the jet stream. The jet stream, basically in five or six days, gets all around the, the, whole, the whole world. So wherever you are, so you think you're safe here. And let me tell you that somewhere between 10 and 14 days after Fukushima happened, the highest radiation in the United States was in Melbourne, Florida. Wow. So don't think anywhere you're, gonna, you're, you're really safe from that. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad because we don't say that without having some solutions, okay? But I just wanted you to understand. So you have this jet stream. And this jet stream is thick and big and it travels about half the speed of an airplane, 245 miles an hour, something like that. And it's particularly intense between 25 and 35,000 feet. Where is it that we fly airplanes? About 33,000 feet, right? Sometimes a little bit higher. So when you are flying in an airplane, you are being exposed. Now, I've actually gone up with a Geiger counter and measured it. It's about 10 times higher. So anywhere you look at it, we have to pay attention. We have to know. So. I take particularly antioxidants and different things when I'm on the airplane, plus a few other things. But my, my point is, we are all exposed, and just because we're on the East Coast doesn't mean we aren't exposed. So I'm just going to go ahead there. So you got that little piece of the story. Now this red, this is obviously the purple zone of Japan, right? Fukushima, and it's coming across. Now South America is being pretty heavily hit. People aren't talking about that. Now of course we have United States and the West Coast being hit, um, but South America too. This is a map of the cesium-137, uh, but it, it's pretty much the water flow. Then we have the air flow. Let me explain a little bit about that. And again, don't worry about it because it's treatable, but after Chernobyl, the rate of perinatal mortality increased 900%. Where do you think that happened? Boston. What's going on? Well, it's coming over in the jet stream, lands on the grass, and who's eating the grass? 
you aren't eating the grass, the cows are eating it, right? And the mothers who are pregnant are wanting to fill up on milk and are eating dairy. And dairy is somewhere between 15 and 30 times higher, as is all the flesh food, in radiation, pesticides, and herbicides. Okay, so their kids in the fetus and right after birth are getting a heavy dose of I-131, radioactive iodine. So we don't know where it lands, but we can prevent it. So um, on the West Coast right now, um, following Fukushima, the research shows that 28% of the kids who are born are born with some kind of thyroid disorder, usually hypothyroid. In Japan, it's 44%. So what do we do? We want to take a iodine supplement. It's called competitive inhibition. I have found the most active is uh, a form that's uh, it's one nascent, two, it's mined uh, where there's no radiation. We don't do it from the ocean because uh, there's too much radiation. Okay, and then the third thing is that it is scalar wave activated. It's a very, very powerful and it seems to have a really nice effect on people. And if people want to get that, you can just check in at my website, drcousins.com, and you'll get directed. And you'll see also our, our online store, okay? So it's available. Now, do you want to wait till another Fukushima happens? No. The whole idea is fill up your thyroid now with healthy iodine, right? And therefore, if it happens, it can't get in. Competitive inhibition, the good iodine is there. Let's keep in mind that 95% of Americans are iodine deficient. Okay? 95%. And that's been, well, that was a study with 4,000 people over about 1997 to 19. Oh, uh, 2005, recent study. So it's like, oh, that means 95% of the people in this room are iodine deficient and therefore susceptible to I-131 radioactive poisoning. Could I be any clearer? So, simple. Start taking a healthy iodine. And this is what I'm, I'm talking about. And so this is what we use as the most powerful. Does it, that make sense? So we don't really have to worry we just have to act appropriately, and that's one of the things we do. So, in addition, we're also looking at not just thyroid, but 60% of the kids 12 and under now have, in Fukushima, now have type 2 diabetes. That's unheard of. 60% of the total population under 12. Wow. So, that's a, a big issue, okay? So obviously Fukushima is the biggest nuclear disaster, but let's, let's get serious. We're surrounded by radiation. You're going to do CAT scans and you're going to, you know, live near a nuclear plant because they're all leaking, okay? You know, at one time or another, they all are leaking. Some have serious leaks. Um, there's food irradiation plants uh, where they may be using cobalt-60 or whatever. It's like... it. We have to protect ourselves practically, not to worry about it, okay? There's over 1,300 fission products. It's not just one or two. And around Fukushima, is about 600 square uh, miles that are uninhabitable. Okay, so the nuclear, uh, the radiation is coming in our food. It's coming in the air, okay? We're breathing it. Um, that's why I have we've covered all our food, all our farming is, uh, is, is covered. So it's in our food and here we got this high levels of cesium-137 in the plankton. So it's not just the fish, it's the plankton and it's the kelp. They're all radioactive right off the coast of California. Okay, so and then we look at all these tuna, 15 out of 15 tuna are, are, are radioactive. And it, this is not encouraging people to eat fish, as you can get. And also, your omega-3s do not get from fish. Your long-chain omega-3s. That comes from yellow algae. It will have some radiation if it's the Pacific Coast, but it's going to be a lot lower. 
So look at all these. I don't like to read off all the percentages, but pretty much all the all the fish are are, are radioactive in the in the Pacific that we're looking at. Southern California sea we test over 500 percent higher for radioactive iodine. This is this is a serious problem. So we don't get sea vegetables from the Pacific anymore. We're using main coast sea vegetables and. You know, we'll see what happens from there. So that's that's the problem. So I mentioned the statistics here. So we're looking at thyroid, we're looking at diabetes. I'm going to tell you there's a lot more heart disease from radiation. It really weakens the heart. That's pretty well documented. It's been documented since the 80s. And perhaps the most important is it fries your brain. Now, I mean that, okay? We see lower IQs. We see significantly more depression uh, and other kind of mental confusion. So that may explain what's going on in California. You know, <laughs> you know they passed. They they refused to pass the GMO labeling. What were they thinking? Well, there you go. That's what they're thinking. Um, so we're looking at some very significant things. There's a definite diabetes connection. Okay, I just want to emphasize that with radiation. So that's affecting us. So uh, it's, a, it's a really big deal. So that, that's kind of the, the radiation part of it. Now what do we do? What do we do? So um, some very smart people have gotten together and figured out a remedy and a remedy works in a very interesting way, and I'm going to tell you backwards. It creates a hydrogen cell, fuel cell uh, activation in our cells. And when that's activated, it burns up all the radiation intracellularly. And this can be measured. Now, that's really unique. We're not talking about radiation in your skin. We're talking about in your cells where it does the most damage, where your DNA is. So... We have a, re a remedy, and again, you can call um, our or email our la our uh, online store and just ask for the radiation remedy. Okay, and it's got over a hundred radioactive, uh, you know, homeopathic nucleotides, and it's got a whole variety of things, and it's super oxygenated. And that kind of combination creates a hydrogen cell, which is very, very powerful and burns up the radiation. And that's cool. I mean, we, we, the research is very exciting, and, 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 and people take it even in Japan, even in Tokyo, and their intracellular radiation goes to zero for about two years. But now I'm recommending, you know, if you're going to get on an airplane, go ahead and take, take a week before, a week after. It's not a lot that, that we use. And if you order it, then we'll tell you how to use it. So... That's what we're looking at. But I want to, again, get back to IQ, and I want to get back to a way, a whole lot of increased cancer. From Chernobyl, 25 years later, we are talking about 1 million extra deaths. Okay. And since Fukushima, there was 35% increase in deaths, you know, immediately after Fukushima. So we really, really, it's a big deal. So we move on now. Mental health. There's no question that it's been proven that radiation causes depression. Actually, before Fukushima, they were able to track uh, in different countries where the highest amount of nuclear plants was the highest amount of depression. France, which had the highest amount of nuclear plants, was number one in depression. But it went according to the number of nuclear plants. Interesting stuff. Um, now, here's the thing that the media is not telling you. There is no safe level of exposure to radiation. This is by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Carl Morgan, Director of Health Physics Division of Oak Ridge. There is no safe level, period. So all this nonsense about, well, it's kind of safe, and then they change it again, and they change it again about what's safe. None of it's safe. These are top researchers. And then... Uh, Dr. John Goffman, MD, PhD, hired 
by the uh, Atomic Energy Commission looked at the whole thing and he, he found that there's a direct correlation between radiation and cancer. He also is the one who brought out the information about radiation and heart disease. So the data is there and we have ways to protect ourselves. And uh, maybe next year when we do this, we'll, I'll have a whole lecture on the radiation because there's a whole protocol that works.